and we have page five to do. All right, so we have a parabola that's defined by this quadratic. So if I want to imagine this, um, you know, I have no idea exactly how it looks, but there's going to be a y-intercept. Maybe I should draw it a little bit, something like this. There's going to be a y-intercept. There's going to be some zeros, um, and that's what we're looking for. But we don't have to graph it. We just need to state the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, that's when x is equal to zero. So I'd sub that in. If x is equal to zero, this term would be zero. This term would be zero, and I'm just left with y is equal to negative 28. So that would be the y-intercept way down low at negative 28, be something way down here. And then it asks us for the x-intercepts. Well, to find the x-intercepts, I need to factor it and look for the zeros. So I'm going to go back to this. What multiplies to negative 28 that adds to 3? All right, well, 2 is a multiple, but that's going to be 2 and 14. That's going to be too close. So you might have to go through some thinking with this one. All right, this is the process that I go through. You can see, um, is 28 divisible by 3? Whoops. Is 28 divisible by 3? No. Is 28 divisible by 4? Oh, it is. So 4 times 7 equals 28. And hang on, let's think about that. The difference between 4 and 7 is 3. So that sounds good because they need to subtract to be 3 because I have a negative sign here. So it's going to be 7 and 4, but the 7 is going to be positive and the 4 is going to be negative because they have to add to a positive value. So there are my factors. So it looks like this, x plus 7, x plus 4 are my factors. But I want to know when that is equal to 0. Right, because that's when y is equal to 0. For the x-intercepts, y is equal to 0. So either this term 0 or this term 0. So x plus 7 equals 0. So if I subtract 7 from both sides, x equals negative 7, or x equals negative 4. When we solve for that, to set it equal to 0, it's always the same number but the opposite sign. So the x-intercepts are equal to negative 7 or, sorry, one of these is supposed to be, this is supposed to be negative 4 here, negative 4. So the intercept would be negative 7 or positive 4. So if I had to sketch something like this, it would open up because there's a positive in front of there. The y-intercept would be down here way at negative 28, and it would cross over at negative 7 and positive 4. I think I kind of did that off my sketch, but it's just a sketch. All right, so here is an application question for a parabola or a quadratic. The following graph over here shows the height versus the time of a toy rocket. It didn't tell us any units, so I'm going to assume meters. Um, it's a toy rocket, so I'll assume seconds here. If you're not sure in the question, you just go ahead and ask. I'll give you a unit. What is the initial height of the rocket? Well, initial height means zero time is right here. So I can see it starts at zero. So the initial height, so at t equals zero seconds, the height is or was zero, ze, zero meters. Okay, zero meters, initial height. What's the maximum height? Well, the maximum means the highest, so I'm going to look at here. This is the motion, so here, this is the maximum, so I need to read that off. That was at 240 meters. The maximum height was 240 meters. Next question asks us, what time does it reach? Well, time is on the x-axis, so I have to go down here do, 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 and read it, and that's at 4 seconds. So that was at the maximum was reached. The maximum height was reached 
at four seconds. How long was the rock in the air? Look at the graph carefully. Well, this is where it started and this is where it ended. So it was in the air for eight seconds. That's where it hit the ground. So the rocket was in the air for eight seconds. And there's the last bit of quadratics. And then we go on to trigonometry. All right, so I'll pause there. I don't know if there's anything else there you need to look at. Um, we'll go on to trig and measurement. So here we are, trig and measurement. So what do we have to remember here? We have to remember so ka toa and you have your triangles for figure out how to rearrange those and that's on your reference sheet. So this is a question, um, I, if I was going to give you this question on the exam there would be a picture so what we have is we have a three meter tall tree. You can imagine a tree, three meters tall, casts a two meter shadow. So what happens is the shadow of the tree, I drew that longer though, there's a two meter shadow for a three meter tall tree. Maybe I'll draw that. And the sun, you have to imagine the sun is shining over here and it's making a shadow. Okay. So this is going to be 90 degrees. There will be a hypotenuse, not necessarily do I need it. And it says determine how tall, oh, sorry, shout out. At the same time, there's a tall building. These are not to scale, 30 meters. Sorry. That's the height of the building. Projects a 30 meter shadow. Determine how tall the building is. So. One of the assumptions you'd have to remember in this question or know in this question is that because the sun is at the same height, these angles will be the same. So it doesn't matter which angle you choose, you can choose this one up here, okay? But those two angles are the same angle. Now, I need to know two things in a triangle to solve for a third. And this one, I know two sides, so that means I can solve for this angle. If I solve for this angle, I can put it over here because this is the same one. Then I'll know two and I can solve for the height. Right? This is the length of the shadow, the 30 meter shadow. And I'm solving for the height of my building. This is my building. So I'm going to look at this and say if this is the angle I've chosen, then this is the opposite and this is the adjacent because it is beside, this one is opposite, this one is the hypotenuse, and I really don't even need this one, I wasn't given it. So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? That is tan or toa. So tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now on this one, I'm solving for theta, so that means I need to find the tan inverse. Because theta, this is a number, and theta is kind of trapped inside that function. So to get it out, I need to use tan inverse. Tan theta, and I need to go tan inverse of two over three. So these end up doing the opposite, so I'm just looking for theta, and I'll show you how I do that in the calculator. So I need tan inverse, and tan inverse is here and in orange. All right, so I need to use my shift button or my second function, hit that and I'll see tan with a negative one, that's that, and then I'm going to use a bracket and say two divided by three, close the bracket. So it looks almost exactly like that, except that the fraction's done a little bit differently. And that's a angle, so 33.69. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to leave four digits because I'm not done. So I'm not going to round this now. All right, now I'm going to look at this triangle. So now, since I know this angle, I know that this is 33.69. It's not theta anymore, it actually is a number. So, this is the angle I'm using. 
I have the opposite, but now I want to find the adjacent. So tan of 33.69 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So if you have to, you can make your life easier. You can figure out what this number is. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees. There should be a little D there. You can see it. Now to take the tan of this, you just hit, or tangent, tan 33.69 and hit equals and you get a really long number. So I'm going to write down four of those digits and they're all sixes. That equals 30 over H. Now, I need to solve for H, so that means I need it on the numerator. So I am going to multiply both sides by H because what H is doing is division. The reason I multiply both sides by H because I want this to become 1. Now I'm left with H times 0 0.6666 equals 30, but I want to solve for H. So I'm going to divide both sides by that. So then on this side, they divide out and become 1, and H is equal to 30 divided by 0 0.666. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 30 divided by 0 0.6666 hit equals, and I get 45. 45.00. Now, I'm not done because it's a word problem. So I have to also think about what the units of that are. If I go back and look, the height was 30 meters. This was all in meters. The shadows were in meters. Therefore, the height of the building is 45 meters. Done. So you can see the final answer. All right, so we'll go on to a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. So we have to be able to identify the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. It's always across from the 90 degree angle. So this could be A and this could be B. We write down the formula. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I fill that in. A is 3. B is 4. So 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. If I add them up, 9 plus 16 is 25. I'm not done though because I'm not interested in C squared, I'm interested in C. So the function or the opposite of squaring is square root. So I'll do that in red. So you have to know how to get rid of that. To get rid of a square, you do square root. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side to keep it balanced. So these get rid of each other and you're left with C. And if you're not sure what the square root of 25 is, then you're going to have to figure it out in your calculator. Your square root button is there. Put the 25 in, you hit equals, it's 5. And that makes sense because 5 times 5 is 25. Therefore, the square root of 25 is 5. You just have to think what multiplies to get to 25. What multiplies by itself. All right, so I'm going to take a look here. There's x. That is across from the 90 degree. So that's the hypotenuse. So I know that's c. This could be A, this could be B. Does it matter if you mix those up? It does not matter. Okay, so C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Let's sum in our values. In this case, I'll just put an X for the C squared. Then I have 6 squared plus 9 squared. Write down the X squared. 6 times 6 is 36. 9 times 9 is 81. So that becomes 7. 8 plus 3 is 11. And we're going to have to do that on our calculator. I don't think it's a perfect square. So I'll do the square root of 117. Oops, I didn't equals 10.81. 
So the reason I did that, I have to get rid of the square. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do the other. X is equal to 10.816. Let's say we're rounding to one decimal place. So I just look at those, and that's X is approximately equal to 10.8. There's no rounding up in that case, because this number is less than 5. There we go. So that is the second to last page of the exam review.